Okay, so I finally saw this movie last night, uh, Anatomy of a Fall, and wow, I completely understand why that movie got nominated for so many awards. The reason why I want to talk about it, uh, I'm sick, so that's why I'm talking this way. I don't normally sound like Marge Simpson. So many things I want to say about it, and the, the, it hits so many of the topics that I talk about regularly. Before I even talk about the movie, it's a friendly reminder that even Margot Robbie wants people to stop talking about her not getting... <laughs> And nomination. I mean, I saw this movie and she did a good job, but she definitely did not do a better job at acting than the woman who got nominated from Anatomy of a Fall, that's for sure. We're going to talk about snubs. We cannot. I mean, there's so many snubs, but Greta Lee, by the way, one of the nicest people I've ever met. I used to babysit her kid. She deserves to be nominated too. So many women did. I just also want to use this as an opportunity for anyone who didn't know that when this, the only woman director who got nominated was uh, Christine Trier, I think is how you say her name, when she used her acceptance speech to criticize Macron like baller, she criticized him screwing up everyone's pension, the neoliberal uh, approach to everything, like this woman, I love her. I don't know much about her, but I love this film, and of course, she got, you know, the, she's one of the only women who's ever won the award. And they, of course, were like, she's a spoiled child. How dare her not be grateful, you know? But she was like, nah. And her union backed her up. They were like, hey, we're all worried about this neoliberal crap. Anyway, that's another video. But what was really fascinating about this movie is there's one scene where we overhear a fight between these two, and I'm not going to give any spoilers, I hope. I don't think what I'm talking about is a spoiler. No, maybe it is. Spoiler alert. But anybody who is planning on moving abroad for a man needs to watch that film. There's a whole speech in the middle of it where this man, <laughs> you know, he's living in his hometown, this tiny village in the Alps, very isolated. He's living in the, the town he grew up with in, Convinced her to move there from London. Now, she's German and he's French. And so for her to move to the Alps, to a tiny town in the Alps, where she doesn't speak French that well. She can speak it, she can get by, but she's not super fluent in it. So she would rather speak English, which isn't even her native language. But she's so good at English that that is the language of their couple. And this guy, you know, he's a classic man who's jealous of his wife. He can't write. He wants to be a writer. She's a writer. She's a successful writer. She gets things done. Nothing stops her from writing. And he always wanted to be a writer, but he hides behind her. So many men are, are jealous of their wives. And then they end up hating their wives because of their own shame about what they won't do and don't have the courage. Oh, look at you. Where are you going? He's very attached to me because I'm sick. So many men are, you know, instead of being taking action instead of being inspired by their successful wives, they resent them because their wives are a reminder of what, what a failure they are. And this guy is like so mad that, you know, he, he has to center his life around her and he keeps talking about that. And it's so funny because she's just like, no, no. Like, this is a very feminist film. So way more feminist than Barbie. Barbie was written partly by a man. It was all about Ken. I'm not, it, it, Barbie's a feminist movie, but it's like 101. This is like 501, okay? We're talking about like what relationships look like and how men exploit their wives and men resent their wives and men want you to center your whole life around them. And then like this man moved her to his home country and then he's pissed that they're not speaking French in their couple. And she was like, no, 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 no. English is our middle ground. I'm German, you're French. English is our language. And I can't tell you, this is so important. The language of your couple is about power. No one will say it, but that's what it's about. Like Anthony and I talk about it all the time. No matter how good my French is, English will always be our language of our couple. Because I, and I didn't move here for him. I moved here for me. I moved here and I loved my life and I built a life for myself before I ever met him. But it, it, let's say I had moved here for him. You better believe we would never speak anything other than English in, in our home. Because I'm the one who's far away from my family, my culture, my language, my history, my all out my past. I haven't been home in almost, uh, it'll be three years soon. And I can't afford to go home. 
It's so expensive to go home. So I don't know if I'll go home in the next two, three years. I mean, you know, if I'm rich, I can go home all the time, but I don't even believe in all, you know, the carbon footprint of it all. So we are in his country. You better believe English is our language. That is how I feel at home. And his English is perfect. So it, like we should practice French more. You know, people like give him so much crap that he doesn't speak enough French with me to, so that mine improves. But you know, God, just the language part of that whole conversation alone, I was like, good for her. Like Anthony and I were like, oh my God, this is, this is so on, this is exactly what I talk about all the time. She is literally fighting for her life, her innocence in court, and it's all in French. Do you know how stressful it is? Go to a hospital, talk to lawyers, talk to police, and you're in a language that you're not really confident in. When my husband went to the hospital twice last year, the ER twice within a month. Yeah, that's when I realized, oh my God, what have I done? Like, not in a regret kind of way, but I was like, holy crap, I'm so vulnerable. I'm so vulnerable. Because the minute I was in a crisis, I couldn't remember any French. And so I'm dependent on his, his mom and his dad to communicate, but they don't speak any English. Like, this woman is literally like on trial for her life and she's having to do it in French. Like, oh my God, the stress of that. And she's in his town with his childhood friends and nobody's welcoming her. She's just like, you know, it's so hard to make friends in France. Once you have a friend in France, they're a friend for life, but they play the long game. They play the long game and I like that. They approach friendships a lot of times the way we approach dating and then the opposite with dating. They jump right into a dating situation. But if you want to be their friend, you have to just work, be patient, work slow, you know? After five years, I could say I have a handful of good French friends here. But that's five years. And I have lived in so many countries and I've traveled most of my life. I'm really good at making friends. But here, it's challenging. So imagine some woman who's, you know, moves to this little town in the mountains speaking a second language, which is English. And that's the language of their couple and he's pissed. Why don't you speak my language? Like this man, in my opinion, was having a crisis of his own self, his own identity, his own worth. And instead of dealing with it, he kept avoiding it. And every day he avoided himself, he blamed her and was resentful to her. And he seemed pissed that she would not center him. She wouldn't do it. And I love that for her. I mean, this story is tragic, but I, I loved her character and her acting was phenomenal. But one of the things, the biggest lessons is that when they were on neutral territory in London, right? He's French, she's German, they're, they're in London at, at the third city. They were on equal ground, but once you go to these guys' hometowns, you go to their home country, a lot of times that is when they make that switch up. They turn into this other person, this entitled King Baby. Not that maybe they weren't already one, but it seems like once he, she was on his turf, and, you, and, and I hear this all the time, women will meet someone and you know, when they're traveling, it's all great. Or when they're, you know, living a third place, when they, but wait, these men will always convince you to move back to their country because they want to be near their mama and their family and everything. And they expect the woman to make the sacrifice always. But be careful. Once these men go back home, they go back into entitled prince. So the language, the language alone, there's so much power in that. And people have left comments on my videos before, and I'd love to hear if you, if you have something to add to this, but this happens a lot. These men, as soon as they have you trapped in a marriage or in their country or whatever, then they won't even speak the language that you're comfortable with anymore. They switch up the language. You can't make them speak your language, but language is sometimes the only connection that immigrants have to their home. We have social media and all that stuff, but really on a daily basis, language be robbed of that in your own home and not even have your children speak it so that those kids won't even be able to talk to their family when they go back to meet mom's side of the family like i can't j the language thing alone i love this this movie was really good uh, that woman was successful woman knew her worth stood her ground and her husband could handle her and so he hated her for it and speaking of language the your partner if you live in his country He's going to be required to do a whole lot of 
mental load, emotional labor, whatever you want to call it in terms of the language. Last night when we rented this thing, because we're in France, they don't have subtitles in English, right? Because we're in France. Anyone in France watching the movie should surely know French. This movie is two and a half hours long. It took us almost six hours to watch this thing because Anthony... <laughs> Anthony had to like translate almost the whole thing. And I'm like, wait, maybe we should just buy it again on another pl Surely there's a way. But he's like, no, babe, I don't mind. Like he would watch the whole scene and then he paused and he go, okay. So he just said like the, uh, the amount of energy this man has to expend on a regular basis to explain me what to me, what, what the hell his family is talking about because they speak slang a lot or sometimes they cut the end of their words a lot because, you know, they live up in a village and they don't really, you know, they're not used to talking to somebody who speaks French as a second language. So they don't know that you have to be very intentional, right? They just forget. They try. They, uh, they, I love them so much and they love me so much, but you know, they, they're just, they don't, haven't trained their mind to do that. And so all the time he'll be like, he's translating for me all the time there. He translates, like the man does so much. You have, if, do not marry a man that is not just super in love with you. And if you're going to move to his country, he's going to have to do a lot of paperwork translating and all this stuff. And if you're with the wrong person, they could just ice you out by just refusing to translate because they don't want to, because it's a lot of work. Like, the language alone, I can't tell you that one factor, not, in, in, not even in considering the fact that if you have children, you can never leave that country without his permission or it's kidnapping, so you are stuck in that country until that child is 18 years old because of the Hague, right? There's like, they literally, it's kidnapping. Like, the, there's all like, you're so screwed. You're so screwed if you move somewhere for a man and he ends up not being a great guy. You're so screwed. Please, please don't ever just be like, oh my God, I'm gonna marry a French guy. Ah, I just met him, but like, don't, don't do it. Watch this movie first at least because one person is going to be asked to sacrifice so much more than the other. And that is a fertile ground for resentment and power imbalances. And if this is not a safe man, and if he doesn't love the crap out of you, he will use it against you at every turn. I can't tell you how many women I see in the married to a French man group. I'm like, whoa. It's horrifying. And they usually hate their in-laws. Like, I love my in-laws, but this seems to be a very unique experience. So please don't put yourself in this position without doing your research, taking your time, and making sure that you have all your ducks in order and have your own some way of having a passive income possibly or a savings account that he has to put money into or whatever but don't just move to another country for love don't do anything for love it's the dumbest thing women can do because it's usually not even love it's limerence don't follow your heart don't follow your plant don't follow your even your brain there's so many factors that I just want women to pay attention to before you make some huge commitment like this because it is not a good, happy ending for more women than you would realize. It's a recipe for DV, coercive control, financial abuse, and all that stuff. And then you're trapped too.